Hey, my name's Jay. I am a cloud ops advocate here at Microsoft. Uh, one of the things I'm doing right now is kind of just teaching myself how to get through Microsoft Azure. I've used it in the past, but to be honest with you, I still need kind of a, you know, skill up because now I'm a part of the Azure Advocates team. So one of the things I've been doing is been going through the different aspects of the Microsoft Azure portal and then giving myself little projects. So one of the little projects that I'm going to do that is basically as simple as can be is we're going to build a resource group, we're going to create a Linux VM, and then we're going to SSH to that VM. All right, so shouldn't take up too much of your time and uh, it should be fairly simple for users who already have some understanding of Linux or even maybe just of the cloud. Um, if you want to do this from a Windows machine, don't feel any problem that I'm doing it on a Mac. Um, the only difference is you may need to just bring up your Mac terminal, I should say your, uh, your Windows terminal. I know that there's a terminal in Windows now, uh, which is pretty cool. So uh, let's get started. This is going to be a um, kind of loose and conversational way of doing this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a resource. So to create a resource, we have all these different types of options that we can use. Uh, but in all honesty, I want to start with a resource group because I want to name where it is I'm going to create our resource within. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Add and then we can give it a name. So we'll just call this J Demo VM. That's going to be the group, the J Demo VM. Now you can do this in the CLI, but I think it's pretty easy for me to show you how to do it right here. But also zoom it out a little bit more so it's easier for you all to see. Cool. So let's continue. So we've given it a name and now we have to give it a subscription. Uh, I have a few different ones, but Right now, J.A. Gord is mine. Uh, and then I can pick a region that I want this resource group to live within. Uh, and I'm cool with East US. As you can see, we've got tons of different types of resource groups. And the one thing that you really need to be aware of is that the different resource, uh, I should say different resource group locations. And the thing that you need to be aware of is all these different locations do have different types of services that are available to them. So not every single resource group is uh, Location is the same. Uh, if we look up Microsoft uh, Azure locations, um, and I guess we'll look up services, we'll be able to see uh, the different uh, Azure regions and the services that are provided them. So we can go actually Azure products by region. And we'll be able to see exactly all the different products that exist within that region. Here we go. So if I was in uh, Asia Pacific or France and I wanted to uh, make sure that a particular product was there uh, that I'm going to use, I would want to check here first. So anyway, uh, I'm just going to use US East and then click Create. Okay, it'll validate. And now it's created the, the group right there, resource group created. And uh, this is where we're going to want our um, our new elements or, or resources to live within. So in here we have the ability to create resources. So what we'll do uh, right here is we're going to create a resource and it'll bring us up this huge kind of marketplace type uh, place where we can see all the different types of options of servers and uh, solutions that we could pick. So if I needed a Jenkins server, I could do that. If I needed a Windows server, an Ubuntu server, I have all these different options. Uh, if you're using Chef Automate, uh, there are a bunch of these different types of uh, servers that you can go ahead and pick an extension that will automatically install the agent that you're going to connect to Chef with. The same can be done with, say, uh, there are a few backup agents and a couple of other different pieces of software that you can uh, deploy automatically. So what we're going to do is just click on Ubuntu Server 16.04 LTS and then we're going to be using the resource manager. We're not going to be using Classic. Uh, Classic is an old method of deploying. Resource manager is the most current and up to, um, uh, up to speed version of how to deploy on Azure. So we'll click Create. And it'll start creating the uh, resource within this particular wizard. So the name that we're going to use is JDemoVM. 
the VM disk type, we're going to have an option of using spinning disk, standard, um, SSD, or premium SSD. Uh, I'll pick premium SSD. You can get more information about the different disk types if you go to our docs. Uh, I'll need to pick a name that I'm going to actually SSH in with. So I'm going to go by my computer name of Destro. And uh, I'm going to set either an SSH key or a password. So all I'm going to do now is cat my SSH key. and put it in the PD copy. And that goes ahead and actually stores it within my, uh, my buffer. So what I'll do is I'll go here, I'll enter in my SSH key here, but I'm gonna paste that in after I finished explaining to you the next section. Uh, so what we'll do is set a subscription. Like I said, we're gonna use my subscription. Uh, the next thing we'll do is have a resource group selected. We create a JDemo VM. So we'll use that. And then we'll go ahead and ensure that we're doing it in the location we sell, uh, selected before for our resource group. And in this case, it's East US. So I'm gonna go ahead, pop in my SSH key, and then we'll move on to uh, sizing in section two. So the next section, we're actually gonna go ahead and start choosing a virtual machine size. This will be the kind of VM that we use. Uh, this will give us all the different types of uh, VM combinations with the uh, SKU or the name, uh, the type uh, of server it is. So if it's a standard, uh, something else, uh, what it's compute optimized for, if it's memory optimized, storage optimized, general purpose, uh, then how much RAM, how many data disks come into a fault, the max IOPS, the local SSD size, and then the ability to add, I believe that's premium storage, and some other things. And we get the, uh, the, the cost all the way here on the side. Uh, today, I'm gonna be picking the B4MS. It's gonna cost me $124 for the month, but we're only gonna have it up for a few minutes and we pay as we go, so we don't need to worry about it so much. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click select. And now we're gonna start configuring some optional features. So uh, now we have the ability to have high availability storage. And this will give us uh, the option to do some really, really deep things uh, with our storage and have uh, additional redundancy, even a single uh, region. But we're not doing that today, so don't worry about it. We don't have availability set, set up. Uh, if you're interested in what that is, I really recommend you look into some of these uh, zones. So check out the zone regions and then check out availability sets. Uh, the same thing can be set with managed disks uh, if you want to uh, have Microsoft handle all the redundancy and fault tolerance without creating and manage the storage. Uh, you can have them enable it. Uh, we'll say yes. Then we can select the size of our OS disk. This is where our operating system will live. Uh, we can actually select uh, some virtual networks and subnets and the public IP address that's gonna be assigned to this new uh, virtual machine that we're gonna create. And we can either create one or state there is no, or even say uh, what a specific IP we already have access to. Um, and then we can actually say whether we want it to be a basic, which means it'll be um, Let's see, the problem excuse, so it's it's about the, the load balancer here. So uh, we'll stick with basic and the assignment is whether or not it'll be a dynamic IP. And the dynamic IP kind of refers to the fact that in the life cycle of your, your virtual machine, uh, the IP address can change. And what we think about normally uh, is IPs don't normally modify themselves on a, uh, a server. We typically assume, well, this is the IP that I have, this is the one I'm always going to connect to. Uh, but because we're working with a, uh, a public cloud and these are limited resources, uh, you actually have to pay more if you want to have an IP to remain static. Dynamic means that we'll use just basically name-based uh, addressing and we don't need to be too uh, concerned with the specific IP address. So not a big deal. Uh, so now we have the ability to go through network security groups and we can use basic or advanced. Uh, advanced gives you further look into the actual group here and we'll give you some uh, additional view into what ports you want created uh, and specific allowing, uh, whether you want to allow all for 22 or maybe you just want to allow your local IP address. Uh, for today, we're just gonna allow all. Uh, we'll get into more security features in the future. Um, so we'll pick all these as their uh, basic and now we can go in and 
pick the, uh, the public ports that we're going to access through. So we'll pick SSH uh, and make sure that you don't keep this public and keep this on because we don't ever want 22 open to the world. That means that people can easily port scan and find out if 22 is open and then they'll start just flooding you with uh, SSH tags. Uh, so now we have extensions. Uh, extend, oh, and just to give you a little bit, this gives you a warning about that particular security feature. You can also update the inbound traffic rules at any time using network security groups. Uh, you have auto shutdown, configures your virtual machine to automatically shut down daily. And that's really useful if you're doing something like a development environment. Uh, I'm not gonna turn that on. Uh, it'll be great to have boot diagnostics and we don't necessarily need the guest OS diagnostics right now to be monitored uh, because we're just doing a demo. But as you can see here, you'll get metrics every minute for, for your virtual machine and you can use them to stay alerted on your application. It's kind of important because if your app starts really growing and uh, it gets to the point where you need to find out more information, you'll have that. So what we'll do is we're not going to enable backup, but we do have the ability to create uh, managed backups. You can get all the information on managed backups uh, from our documentation. We've got managed service identity that you could register with Azure Active Directory. We're not going to be using it because we're not going to be creating an Azure Active Directory server. So we'll just go ahead and click OK. And now we'll get a summary of all the things that we want to be on this particular server. So we've got the subscription, the resource group, the location. And what's really cool is that you can go here and download a template and parameters so that if you ever want to replicate this, you can use this particular uh, Azure Resource Manager template to say exactly all the information that you want to replicate. Uh, it's a template. You can download it. Uh, you can see it within PowerShell to actually launch all this. Um, if you wanted to launch this in uh, .NET or in Ruby from a particular type of uh, script, you can go ahead. Uh, but today we don't need to do that. So we'll X out and we're just going to click Create. So right now we've submitted the deployment. And if you click up here to the little notifications bell, you'll see uh, what's going on. And if we go to deployment and progress, we can get an idea of all the different uh, tasks that need to be uh, completed in order for us to actually launch a VM. So this is going to take a few minutes. So when I come back, hopefully the deployment will be completed and we'll move on to how to access our VM. Hey, so our resource is completed. We can see here de deployment succeeded. I go ahead and just click on that. And it'll give you an overview of everything that was created. So now let's go to our resource groups. We'll start from the beginning, go back to the breadcrumb, if you will. And we'll go to the one that we created, which is JDemo VM. And now we get an overview of all of our resources. And in our resources are the virtual network that was created to actually access this new VM, the network security group that acts as the firewall, the IP address to access it from, a network interface. So this is like a portable network in, uh, NIC card. Imagine like an IP address and all that inf information can be just picked up and inserted into another VM. So if we want to retain uh, some of the uh, elements of the private uh, network interface, uh, we can get an overview of it right here. So like the IP configuration, the DNS name, all this other stuff is can handled on there. Uh, we can go ahead and modify it right from this. So we have our disk. This is the actual physical disk that we selected. And then here is the VM, the actual machine that was created. So let's click on this. And now we have all the elements associated with our new virtual machine. And if we wanted to actually connect to it, we can see there's a public IP address and there's a DNS name that we can configure and we'll go ahead and click connect. It'll actually tell us the actual SSH command. So if you're not familiar with SSH or you just not really sure what username was created, you can go ahead there and we'll just pop it in. We'll say yes. Hey, and there we go. We've got our new Linux server, which we can sudo to root if we want, app get update and then start installing the applications that we're going to work with if we need it for a demo environment or you know maybe you want 
an IRC server. I couldn't tell you. But anyway, this is a very, very simple way to start working with Microsoft Azure um, to go ahead and delete these resources. It's one really simple command. So go back to your main shell and uh, actually we'll do this in Cloud Shell. Makes it even simpler. So open up your Cloud Shell. Uh, Cloud Shell will give you the option of using either PowerShell or a Bash Shell. Uh, let's see once it comes up. Once Cloud Shell comes up, we'll be able to actually run some commands so we can go ahead and terminate uh, this entire group. It'll delete all the resources that we had and get us uh, back to zero very simply. So what we'll do is AZ group delete and then what we'll name is J Demo VM, which is this group right here. So we'll go ahead and we'll click return or I should say hit return it'll ask me if I want to perform this operation I'll say yes and then it'll go through the whole process of deleting everything that we saw in the resource group uh, that was associated with this particular VM so if we go back over here one by one it'll start remo uh, removing all these uh, resources and as you can see it'll delete this one as well and that's really that for today um, don't forget to go to the Microsoft Azure website, check out all the new things that we've got, including products, um, documentation, and uh, different events. Uh, if you have any questions and you'd like to get in touch with me, uh, you can always do so. You can go to twitter.com uh, and you'll find me as Jade Estro. Uh, pull it up right there. That's me, Jade Estro. So go ahead, get in touch, and um, let me know what you think. Thanks for uh, taking this little short journey on this early tutorial with me. Hope to have a lot more interesting stuff to share with you. Thanks.